What's up guys, Zach and Cody here, and today we are going to be talking about broadheads. Oh, yeah. um, our top four broadheads uh, for 2022. These are probably our best selling and best reviewed broadheads, mechanical slash expandable broadheads we found. So stay tuned. All right, Cody, so it's that time of the year, hunting season's underway, uh, and you know, everyone Every year, the question is, what's the best broadhead I should shoot? Exactly. So Every day we get it. Yeah, absolutely. And these are in no particular order, mm -hmm. uh, but this is probably some of the most requested broadheads that we carry oh, yeah. uh, and that perform consistently, you know, every time. Use after use, yeah. Uh, and so what are we going to start with? What's, what, are we, what are we looking at first? Our first broadhead we're going to roll with is the Grim uh, Reaper. Um, this is the Whitetail Special. It is a total three inch cut broadhead. The reason why this one made the cut as far as for these, like I said, no particular order, mm -hmm. just our best selling four mechanicals is the total cut is three inches on it. So this thing is huge. Um, you can see right there, it's got a long shank on it. It's got a, what we call a razor tip on the end of it. It's very sharp. So um, razor tip, what's the, what is the razor tip? It's just, if you look at it, the point of it, it's just a very rigid point. It's got three, uh, it's almost like a, I don't want to call it a trocar okay. because it's not a trocar tip. That's it's just similar. their patented, you know, it's called razor tip from Grim Reaper. Right. But um, just the giant massive hole. And I like the design of this as far as the way this broadhead deploys when it hits something. These are actually pretty dull right here. So it's not going to cut and, you know, not open. Um, I've seen some holes that these things have left through deer and it is devastating. Yeah. It's massive. almost too nasty. It's almost too gruesome or it, it almost destroys too much of the shoulder, you know, the meat around the ribs and everything like that when it yeah. goes through something. A lot it of makes for an easy tracking job. Though. It does. They, there's a lot of guys around here that have gotten great results off these. I'll tell you a story real quick. We had this kid come in here. Um, so we're off base, all right? We live or our shops right off Camp Lejeune. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to, a lot of guys are coming from all around the United States and they're coming here for training and stuff like that. And they're here for a while. Well, this kid comes down here, young guy, man, comes from Texas. Um, he didn't have his bow with him, so he ended up buying a bow. And he's shooting lower poundage, and this is what kind of like made me question some things. And uh, he wanted these broadheads right here. He's probably shooting 62 pounds or so. If you're gonna shoot a mechanical or expandable, I recommend at least 62 or higher, if anything, yeah. you know, if you want you know, the best odds of it deploying as far as possible. Because there's control. so much you gotta have energy raw. Yeah, you gotta have some inertia deploys. going through that, through that air into the animal. Right. Well, this kid comes in here and he buys these broadheads and these bows, and I try to talk him out of these, actually. And normally, I, tr I don't try, and I just, our job as salesman is give you the information on the product, let you decide, you know? Right. Stories, facts tell, stories sell. Yep. This kid's like, man, I've taken so many animals down in Texas with this one broadhead, and this is newer to us. Like, we just got in this mm -hmm. particular broadhead. I'm like, well, let me know. Let me know how it works for you here, man. And the next day, he comes in, he shows me this, you know, good North Carolina-sized deer, and he shows me the hole this thing left to it, and you could put your, he had his literal fist inside of it. And I was like, well, dang. And I asked him, bar, yeah, I asked if I could take a picture of it, and he sent, or send me the picture, he sent me the picture of it and everything, and these things are just brutal, they're devastating. Yep. Uh, and so, and as far as like mechanical broadheads, one of the great things about a mechanical broadhead is for the most part, you can slap that thing on an arrow and there's not a lot of tuning issues. There's, not, there's not a lot of discrepancy between your field point and your broadhead. And, and that is They're one of the profile. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's similar to that field point you're shooting. So there's less surface area, you know, less drag for that area yep. to, you know, kind of deviate or veer one way or the other. And that is not saying that we don't believe in shooting or practicing with your absolutely. Your channel. Still practice with them. Absolutely. See if there is some deviation. Your bow might, you, you might be out of tune or something like that. You but there generally is less yes. with, less mechanical, involved. Less yes, involved. with a mechanical broadhead. Yep. And one of the things I'm a fan of with the Grim Reaper 2 is I um, I did some testing with them. And, I mean, like I said, I slapped the thing on and shot it, and it was spot on. Most spot of, on. Like there was, right behind the Yeah, it, it literally hitting right where that field point was hitting. And the durability of them, too. Yeah. You know, I was putting it through uh, a foam block. It deployed every time. Um, and then I was able to take and close that thing up. And shoot it again. And I like their inertia-driven system. That it's almost like a magnet's being held in. It when is. you close that thing up together, it's secured. It's locked in. Those blades are not free-floating by any means. And you'll hear so. it. You can hear that audible yeah. click whenever those things. And there, I mean, those things. It takes some force yep. to deploy them. But once one deploys, they pretty much they all, all want to go. Yep. So it's a cool feature. It's like a kinetic system on us. Yeah, it's definitely, an, um, it's been a good broadhead for us. We've had a lot of luck with them. We got a bunch of our buddies that actually shoot them. Yeah. I know Will's a big fan of them. God, Will's and he so shoots many more deer than probably anybody, anybody you know. know. Yeah, and he consistently finds deer within, 
you know, 20 to 40 yards for the most if, part. If Will makes contact with a deer yeah. and it's with a Grim Reaper on the end of yeah. it, it's, it's, not, it's, going it's not going far. Yeah. And I like the fact that they actually come in four packs. Absolutely. So, and the, best the other buck, model, the pricing is good on them Yeah, too. the pricing is good. They come with four instead of most companies put you with three. Mm -hmm. Some of them even do two and just lower the price, you know. Right. But um, there are other models they have out as well that they come with either a practice head or a, you know, a fourth broadhead. Right. So for an economic standpoint, that's one reason why Grim Reaper made the cut on this and the cut itself. The big reason is the cut. Other thing, aside from the cut, there's no other components on here. There's no collars. There's nothing else to deal with. You don't have to worry about losing anything. It's all self-contained. It's almost like on that magnetic system or whatever it is yep. that causes it to remain, remain closed. So it's a, good, it's a good buy, man. It's yep. been really, really good for us. What do we got next? Next, this is probably one of my personal favorites when this came out. Uh, I think I got our reps into some prototypes of this many years ago. And uh, well, I got the 125 prototype. Mm -hmm. I was shooting 125s at the time. This is the Mega Meat. Um, now, first glance is you're gonna see that blue collar on the back. And a lot of people get discouraged when they do that. Good thing with G5 is, I like the fact they include a, what they call their ballistic match point mm -hmm. with it. So you had a practice, somewhat of a practice broadhead to simulate the flight of this, and you actually get extra collars in the back, and they actually put you a rubber or a band aid inside because the broadheads are so sharp. They're razor blades. These they are. are. These um, are sharp. One thing about G5 is they actually in the medical industry too. They make surgical equipment, so knives and stuff. So when it comes to having sharp objects on the end of an arrow, they know what they're doing. They've got to figure it out. Yeah, and I do like this retention system on the collar. Uh, it's about four pounds for it to open, so you know it's it's not like it's, it's gonna open. I, I haven't had one open in mid-flight yet, which right. is good. I mean, I've shot plenty of these, but uh, as far as the design of it, this is where it gets. This is what I like about it. Let's just say bad day happens, the worst look. You know, it's just raining on your parade. This thing doesn't open. This is still a pretty decent sized cut. It comes out a little over half an inch, I want to say, mm -hmm. from the diameter of it, and. Most guys, some guys that are shooting fixed blades, that's close to what right. you know the diameter is on a fixed blade. Good point. But the way these blades are designed, it is going to slice through and through. It, there's no way this thing cannot cut, per se, through an animal. And like I said, I haven't had one not deploy. Yeah. Um, and the beautiful thing is I haven't had one deploy in midair either. These are relatively quiet. They've got a good ferrule system on them, and they're they are thick. sharp. They're heavy duty too. Yes, I mean, if you look at that thing, it's it's beefy. Yep. But uh, like I said, the good thing on G5 is they give you extra collars. And another thing I like is they have a broadhead wrench on here. So, you know, I have cut myself a broadheads, put them on, and that sounds stupid, but some of them are just so sharp out of the package. And right. the next one we're going over, I actually cut myself in the store with. Yeah, that's, um, that's part of it. We should probably keep a medical kit a little closer to us. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, th these deploy, what's the difference in the way these deploy in the Grim Reapers? Uh, so these are from the front back. Well, if you see, these are, these are technically what we call our rear deploying mm -hmm. broadhead, essentially. They're starting from the front and deploying from they pull the rear. Open up. Okay. So they actually, and you get a good size cut. I'm trying not to yeah, cut well, myself. I think it's two inches. Yeah, it's a total two inch cut. And you can see the collar can come across right there. Obviously once that's screwed in the broad head, nothing's going anywhere. But that's, yeah, that's a big cutting diameter. Three blade. Yep, and I, I mean, you can go look on all kinds of form pages and stuff and see the destruction these things have, you know, caused. I have a good friend of mine, Alex, he actually shoots these. And he will not shoot anything else. I mean, after his experience, I considered in this video dropping in some of the the images that we have from some of our yeah. friends and some of our customers who have shot animals, but they're pretty gruesome, and I I don't know how they are would, very graphic. How it would work with YouTube, so we're gonna save those, you know, for later and not throw them up here. But yeah, um, we've had a lot of great feedback on the Mega Me. It's been a big seller this year. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it's been, it's a great company. G Five is the manufacturer. Great company. Um, Great customer service as well. Oh yeah, um, solid as a rock. And yeah, that's that broadhead. I mean, another one you can slap on there, and for the most part, take it out and shoot it. Oh yeah. Next broadhead we have. Um, this is tried and true, man. If you're a mechanical or expandable guy, the Rage Tripan. Everyone um, knows the name. Yep, Rage in the Cage, man. And this started years ago. I'll never forget seeing. I had a friend of mine in high school. He he had gotten uh, the original Rage slip cams, one from way back in the day. Um, they were not the best broadhead on the market at the time. You know, it was very uh, evolutionary in the sense of mechanicals and stuff like that. People were kind of just getting around them. And I'll never forget seeing this doughy shot with them. And it was like an accident went through something. It was the biggest hole at the time I had ever seen through an animal. And the blood trail was stupid. I mean, it yeah. didn't make sense. Like, I, you didn't think something could bleed that much. But uh, they have, Rage has, you know, they, they're so well-rounded now in the sense of their broadhead technology. Uh, when they came out with the no-collar, I was stoked because Alongside the, like the Mega Meat, um, if they could figure out a way to get rid of the collar to a right. degree, 
that would make that broadhead ten times better, and it's a great head. Right. So I mean, it would be a top tier contender for anything. The no collar kills it for me. So oh. this is when we were just talking about this. This is not a collar system on here. It's actually a bushing. It's a feral. It's a feral bushing. What it is is an adapter. You see, it falls off right there. It's just for alignment of arrows. If you want to, if you want to line some stuff up. Um, and Rage probably has the most slender profile of these broadheads. Yeah. And they just fly good. I mean, I know guys that don't tune their bows. They just want to shoot right before when deer season comes in. And they put a Rage on it. And they're successful. Yep. I mean, I wouldn't say go, but I wouldn't ever suggest It's not our go. approach. We it's wouldn't not encourage ideal. it. Uh, but we, it's one of the things we do see being here at the shop all the time. Yeah. And these take a couple pounds to deploy, too. And another thing I like is the deployment method is it cannot be sharp. What it has to hit to in order to deploy or to open up. These are not sharp as far as this right, right okay, here. Yes. There's a little bit of a lip on there, and it's going to cause, as you can see, Once for that blade to pop open. And, man, they are they're just sharp. They're titanium ferrule. They're tough. Um, and most of the time, blades are what we'll call, or exp mechanicals or expandables, we call them disposable broadheads because yeah. most of the time you're getting one and done use out of them. Yeah. Um, if, there's a lot of popular hunters that use them. John Dudley has killed more things under the sun than anyone um, with a Rage broadhead. Randy Ulmer, he, uh, he uses a mechanical. His is similar to a Rage called a Sever, but uh, just a little bit different design. But the design that the Rage came out with, the original design, the slip cam model, there's been plenty of game taken out of. Guys have used them on here for over 10 years. Yeah. So. I personally shoot a Rage, yeah. um, and I've- I've I'm, got a Rage in my quiver, man. If I need it in tight spots, I'm gonna, yeah, it's gonna get it's, used. It's, uh, I, I always have them with me, um, and I've never had a problem with a Rage deploying or you know finding an animal oh, if yeah. I've shot one with it. Uh, it's always been a good broadhead for me. I know there's a lot of guys, we, we hear a lot of people- Oh, they don't work, they, they don't open up. They don't work. Um, you know, I think it comes down to shot placement more than anything. I don't think you're. We're in the archery world, remember? Yeah. Shot placement is key over anything. Doesn't matter the pounders of the bow. I'm yes. trying to ram it through a shoulder blade. Right. right. Yeah. Shot placement. There's is some key. fixed blades that we're going to get through a shoulder blade. You got to have a perfect arrow setup. Bow's got to be tuned. Right. The whole works. The thing I like about uh, mechanical is you get a mechanical advantage in a sense. You get a larger cutting diameter. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you have less. Uh, if there's a lot of wind, you're not going to have as much wind drift with a mechanical on the front end. You don't have a lot of steering on the front half of right. the arrow. Everything on the back half where it's supposed to be. Yeah, and the other thing too is, I mean, especially for us here in North Carolina, it's super thick. A lot of the yeah. areas that we hunt, you need a good blood trail in order to find something. Yes. I mean, even if they only go 20 yards, it can get so thick that if you don't have it, you're not going to find it. Exactly. Um, so all these broadheads up here do a fantastic job of, you know, really opening up the animal and providing a good blood trail to track that animal, yes. which is, is key in finding it. Yeah. One of the drawbacks, I think, with the Rages is the price point on them. They are um, a little bit pricier. They're a little bit pricier. You get a good broadhead, but you only get two for the price almost that you get four for some of the other companies. So, yep. it, you know, it's give and take. Um, they they make, do, I will say they do use premium material. They do, the titanium absolutely. Is where, that's where the money's coming from, I think. They're bulletproof, they're yeah. tough, they're strong, they're designed very well, uh, but you are paying a little bit more so you don't get as many broadheads as you do in some yep. of the other, which can be a drawback for some people. And there are many different raised models. You have one called a plus right. P. You yep. know, it's a little bit, the cutting diameter is more swept back per se. So uh, for the lower poundage people or some, you know, some even women on there that are shooting right. them, you know, and kids, um, they're blowing through deer with them. Uh, the next broadhead though is probably my personal favorite right this now. This is brand new brand for, new for 2022. 2022. Yes. Yeah. And I'll let you actually, this is, I mean, our guys here, JR2 is kind of the one that's yeah, he's, really he's spearheaded this thing. He yeah. has. Uh, and he's done some testing with it. Uh, and these things are rock solid. I'll let Cody introduce it. This is the Barbarian from Cobra. So Cobra is kind of, I wouldn't say been absent in the archery industry for the last couple of years, but they have not been as loud as other brands. This broadhead right here is, I think it's changing right now how broadheads are made, how they're deployed, and how tough they are. Uh, it's a titanium broadhead. You get a practice head for, uh, these are new. Uh, the packaging is newer for They us. just changed this. Yeah. yeah, so they included a practice temp in there. A um, little backstory on them. So sometimes we get bored here at the shop and we start opening stuff and we start playing around and testing stuff. So this guy that works with us, JR, you've seen him on many of the other videos. He grabs some of these and buys them. Says, let's go do some testing. We have two bamboo slap boards here. Probably, it's not this board, I think. It's, no, it's a completely not. It's different board. Um, bamboo slap board we have. We go in and uh, we put it at 20 yards, and he breaks through both of them, and you can see where the blades deploy. So we're like, man, this might be a good head, you know? So we're like, well, let's test it up a notch. We go get a you know a piece of um, a two by four, and we put it, you know, the, the uh, two by four at 20 yards, 
70 pound bow he's shooting and this thing you can see daylight through it yep i mean it almost penetrates through the entire thing they had to send me a picture yeah it, it was, was crazy. it was ridiculous and you could see it literally deployed on impact and we're like this thing might be legit so we're like well, let's go shoot it at 30 yards just in a target mm -hmm. and see how well it flies hits right behind the pin hits the dot where we're aiming at and it deployed in the foam so we're like this is tough and then the last test we're like well, let's see how it does if it glances off of anything like that so jr grabbed a 3 8 uh, inch piece of plywood and he turned it quartering away really hard probably like a 60 degree angle or so a little bit further than yeah probably 60 degrees i'd say and at 20 yards it stuck through this three quarter inch plywood or three eighths plywood that we shot and we're like this thing is this thing's legit yep. How this broadhead works takes about four to five pounds to deploy. But, so before that, even before you get into that, the thing that was impressive about it was how it was still shootable. Yes, the broadhead was not. It. Yeah, the, it, the still one, closed. One blade, um, and this the retention system will go in here in a second. One of the retention clips in the back had broke off, and it was on the last shot on the three eighths. I want to say it was three eighths inch plywood that we were shooting at the quartering away. And mind you, it penetrated through this. I mean, at a hard angle, so that's a big thing, and we're not trying to preach this over any of these other ones, but this is a titanium uh, broadhead. What really catches my attention is how thick the blades are. Right. They're 56 thousandths of an inch thick. So this was designed for crossbows. Yes. Yep. The rages are 36 thousandths of an inch thick. Right. So, I mean, you're getting a thicker broadhead, and mind you, this is coming at a premium price. I mean, these are retailing, you know, a little bit more expensive than everything on the table. But you're getting premium materials with it. You got a titanium ferro, you have stainless steel blades, and this is the sweat back design. So, one thing I look for in a mechanical, I don't want anything that's too, you know, open per se, because that's going to hinder your penetration and all that stuff. Uh, the way these blades clip in is there's a there's a rod through the back, and if I we'll do a close up with this, you'll see there's a hook in the back side right here. This hook actually clips in, and you can hear it, and you know it's clipped it's in. Solid. It's solid as a rock. And whenever it hits, it has to open up. So the blade, they made it sharp on the edge right here. So whenever it does, you know, start to deploy, it's cutting as it's deploying. Right. So that's a, you know, that's just going to help with penetration and all that stuff. But this broadhead alone, I think, is probably the toughest mechanical out. It is very precise, very accurate. I love the low profile look of these. And they're actually pretty daggone quiet for what it is. Right, yeah. But good job to Cobra for making literally the toughest broadhead. And they, they claim it too. They claim it. I mean, and we've put it to the test. Like I said, just messing around. These guys were in there one evening and shooting it through two by fours and everything else. And just the quality and the machining behind it is yes. phenomenal. Oh, yeah. um, it's definitely not a one and done broadhead. That's what I like about it is I think you can get multiple, you know, shots on an animal with these. I mean, yep. especially if you get a pass through, I would have no problem sticking this back on mm -hmm. another arrow or using the same arrow and running it through again. Absolutely. But uh, like I said, a little bit more pricier than the other ones we have on the table, but the quality and the you know the design of it i freaking dig yeah it's it's i mean it's a missile oh yeah <laughs> yep it is indeed but anyway these are our best for selling best review broadheads and like i said these are trusted friends of ours that are shooting these um and some tests that we've done on our own as well yeah it's been a, these have been our popular ones in the shop yep. um and uh you know it's broadheads are one of those things very controversial and very yeah. um everyone's got an opinion which it's is like great. arrows and arrow weight absolutely um but we we know for a fact all these broadheads perform they shoot well uh, they shoot especially well out of a tuned bow yes um you're not going to have any issues with that um and the quality of the customer service behind each of these brands has been really, really good. Yes. It's been good to us, uh, been good to our customers. Indeed. And not only, the only thing, I wouldn't even, I would call this a drawback to a degree. Uh, the only thing I can complain about this product is it's not as sharp as these other ones coming out of the packaging. Yeah. But you have 56 thousandths of an inch thick blades coming in at 100 grams. They're beefy. Yeah, and then I think they're 76 thousandths of an inch thick out of a 125. Yeah. So they're literally almost thick as a nickel. So, I mean, the blades on them are tough. They're super, they're super sturdy. I think I would just personally sharpen these up with some kind of sandpaper, figure out a way to make them sharper. Other than that, they're going to do exactly what they're supposed to. And all these broadheads that we carry, I believe, aside from the Grim Reapers, are available in yep. 125s and 100s. Yep. Um, and we've got a huge inventory on broadheads at this point in time. We carry a lot of other broadheads that obviously aren't up here, um, mechanical and fixed. Uh, so we've got quite a selection. So if you're interested, um, you know, check out the links below. We'll have links to all these different broadheads so you can check them out and you'll be able to see the full inventory online. I think everyone should buy one pack of each and trust them out for your own, you know. And then let us know what you think about them. Yep. So 
We appreciate it. Um, you know, keep following us along social media. Make sure you like and subscribe to our videos. Uh, until next then, next time, see you then.